Racing Hotline. Very happy to have on that hotline with us the driver of the G Oil TriStar Motorsports Toyota, Taylor Malsum, joins us. Hi, Taylor. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're doing terrific. Uh, so far, I would have to say uh, you've gotten off to a pretty darn good start in your first year in the uh, Nationwide Series. We've watched you uh, progress through the ARCA Series to the Truck Series. Are you happy with the way things have started so far? Oh, um, yeah, we can't complain. You know, we're running good in points-wise, uh, running good with the equipment we have against these big cup teams. Uh, definitely no complaints on our side. I know you've driven uh, now on five different racetracks that are totally different from one another. Has it really kind of given you a, a chance to get real familiar with this race car so as you move on throughout the rest of the season you've got a pretty good grip on what uh, where you're at? Yeah, it's, uh, it's helped a lot just to... Uh, Turning out the engine out to these cars, and it's also uh, brought a lot of, uh, you know, our strong points and our weak points out in our race team just because you've been to every single track that we go on this year size-wise. So uh, we got some things to fix, and um, like like all every team, you always they keep working, but at the same time, on the driver's side, it's, it's fun coming off different size racetracks. And I'm not a fan of the bigger ones, but obviously going to Bristol's fun, and uh, not a fan of Phoenix, but we uh, we just hang on there and stuff like that. One of the things that Charlie and I talked about early on in the show today was about the big disparity in the in the difference between the two races. The nationwide race was a great race to watch. The cup race was an awful race to watch. I got to believe part of that has to do with the actual the nationwide car in that it is just it seems to be racier than the cup car. Do you do you feel like that that you have a car that's just that you're able to race with to get up on the wheel and just kind of have fun with? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't driven much cup car stuff, so it's hard to say just from a driver's standpoint, but I definitely think we just got a lot of uh, hungry people out there in our series that are trying to get get noticed and, and run up front, so it makes it a lot of good racing. You know, all of us young guys are having fun out there, and uh, the car just sticks, sticks the track so well, and the tires that Goodyear's bringing is always good. So there's a lot of good things going for that series right now. We just um, Everyone's going to keep doing what they're doing to keep the ratings up, you know. Taylor, is there, a, is there a camaraderie between you and the other drivers who are driving for smaller teams in the Nationwide Series? Do you guys kind of get together and, and uh, I don't know, strategize, fantasize about how you're going to put these cup guys away? <laughs> I mean, it, it, has to be, uh, it has to be frustrating to a, to a certain point. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, when you're going with a $2 million budget against those $8 million budgets and stuff like that, it's definitely hard, but... Uh, I don't really talk to many of the other drivers. I'm just kind of want to get get my job done with my team and, you know, go from there. So I don't know what their plans are. Our plan is just to be, you know, keep running as good as we can, as hard as we can every weekend and uh, keep improving our stuff and working on, on setups and Mark's putting good motors out just because I keep getting those better, though. I mean, obviously, you always just work to get faster and faster every weekend. Do you have a chance at all to talk with your teammate? Do the two of you work together at all as far as trying to get your setups right when you go to the new racetracks? Uh, not really. I mean, we talk, but we don't. I mean, we all, everyone drives so differently in our in our team that it's hard to set the same race cars. And uh, we just kind of race for best in house is kind of how we do it, you know. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the race this past weekend as far as the racetrack. It appears to... to us as we're watching that race that that, that racetrack is a handful it, it, you wouldn't think a two mile racetrack is a handful but at least when it looks when we see you driving that car it looks like you're on the edge because of how bumpy it appears is that the way that racetrack is or is it somewhat deceiving um no it's definitely a handful those seams in the racetrack make the the handling of the car so screwed up because you either, you know, you hit the seam with the front tires, you get tight. If you hit the rear tires, you get loose. And you got to really be careful on your line. You know, it's real line sensitive there. And then it changes a lot. You know, you run the high line in one and two sometimes and then bottom three and four. So it's real line sensitive racetrack compared to, like, a Michigan or something where you don't have any seams and you kind of just, you know, you rip around the air wide open and race hard there. But California, it's a lot of uh, racing the racetracks. We also talked about Bristol as well, and, and one of the things early on tonight that we talked about was whether or not drivers would like to see Bristol changed back to the, quote, old Bristol, or whether you as a driver really kind of like the way that it is now. Where do you fall within that? Um, I never ran it 
old Bristol style, so I don't know how to say how it is because, uh, you know, that place is so hard to figure out in general. But we, uh, you know, we, I just finished, this first year I finished a race there. I've been wrecked every time, so I'm happy with the, how the race track is right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gotten a lot better this yeah. year, yeah, hasn't leave it? Leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what's uh, what's the rest of the year look like for you? Are you obviously, going to run nationwide. Are you going to do anything else uh, on any time off? Not that there's much anything much time off during the race season, but you got anything else planned? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I want to try to get home and back to Seattle. I run a couple of sprint car races or go run my shifter carts a couple of times. But otherwise, we're just buckle down and focus on uh, keeping the sponsors happy and getting new sponsors and keeping this thing in the top ten points. Well, it's uh, definitely a, a thing to make sure that you uh, you work on. Uh, you got a couple of road courses coming up in the uh, not too distant future, I guess. How's your road course accum? Um, I grew up. I mean, I started racing road tricks, go karts on road courses and stuff like that, and I've done some TR stuff. So um, I'm I'm a fan of them. I like Watkins Glen and uh, and road. I think we go to Road America or something like that. Those are fun racetracks. Yeah. Uh, Montreal, I ran last year. That place is tough. It's just Real technical, real hard to, to remember the track layout and stuff like that. But um, it'll be interesting to see if we get a road course car in our in our stable or not. Cause that makes the difference when you go to those places. Well, I got to think that uh, there's a huge difference between Road America and, like you said, between Montreal. Those two are uh, kind of diametrically opposed as far as road courses go. But uh, how long does it take you when you go to a road course like that? How many laps does it take you? You said it's hard to remember exactly the layout of the racetrack. Does it take you 10 laps, 15 laps, 20 laps? Is there something that kind of, you know, before you get really comfortable with the layout and where you're trying to hit your apexes on a racetrack like that? Yeah, I mean, once you, you know, you do two or three laps, you remember the track pretty well, and then it's just trying to remember how far to push each corner. You know, you got to really sit down and look at the maps and talk to the drivers in those kind of places because, you know, you get real confused on how hard you can push, and some guys can fly through their way faster, and you're just like, that doesn't make sense, so... That's probably the hardest thing is just keeping, keep remembering where you can push the issue and where you need to really lay off and get on the brakes and stuff like that. Well, best of luck to you throughout the rest of the year. It's great to see uh, some of the smaller teams having success. And like you say, you know, when you're going up against uh, somebody with a budget that's four times what you're trying to work with, it's uh, it's great to see you guys having success. So keep it up. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep working hard and uh, keep, uh, try to keep beating these tough guys. All right, thanks All right. a lot. Thanks, Taylor. That Taylor is. Molsom. He uh